Now, in addition to the two passive HHO cells that we have on the motorcycle, we have a mini me dry cell. I was able to make this bracket here, which is just a piece of steel. I just bent it. I uh, used a socket extension and uh, used that to get a nice square angle on it. Drilled a couple holes for mounting. Drilled some holes for mounting on the bike and mounting on the bracket. And then I had to build the dry cell onto the bracket because the screws here extend through the bracket. But now it's mounted. Just a little wiggly. That's okay. Not going to go anywhere. So now all I got to do is wire it up, put the hoses on, and then we will have we will have the indirect hookup HHO system which doesn't require extra power and we will have the direct hookup dry cell. So we will have both different kinds of HHO units, both a dry and a wet cell, and we will have each one hooked up both directly and indirectly to power. Alright, well, we'll get this thing wired up and see how it looks. Here's our new reservoir for the mini me dry cell. The last reservoir I had was nice and small and compact for the motorcycle. However, it just didn't hold enough water. All the chemical and the water, it all broke down too fast. So now we have a slightly bigger reservoir. And I'll get it cleaned up a little bit so it looks a little better. And I'll simply put a couple a magnet on the bottom, a magnet on the side, and it'll hold the bracket into the gas tank. And then that's all we need. And we'll also tap it into the same line. Now I may run it so that all the water is tied into the reservoir or I might just I might separate the two. We'll see how it works both ways. Someone had asked me, uh, where do you put the wires at on your Mini-Me dry cell? Well, what I did was I just used my uh, cutting tool and I just cut a couple grooves into the sides where I needed uh, to put a wire connector. And so that's all I did. I just, right here's a couple cuts and then we put a wire tab here, a couple cuts there, a couple cuts there and there. And then we just have, uh, we use the female connector on the end of a wire and it just slides right on. I'll give you a better example of this as we wire it up. Alright, I have the negative side hooked up. We're grounded right here underneath the bracket. And the first ground wire is running to here. And then another ground wire connects this plate to the back plate with this little loop of wire here. So if I want to, if I'm going down the road and I want to turn it off, all I got to do is reach down, pull the ground wire, and it's off. I'm now going to hook up the positive, and we're going to put that on one of these two tabs and hook it up directly into the electrical system so that when, as soon as you turn the key on, it comes on. And there we have is a complete hookup. We have the indirect HHO system and we also now have the direct hookup dry cell. The only thing left to do is to fill the dry cell up with some water and see what we get out of it. Okay, we have our amp meter hooked up in between the battery and the wiring harness. So now when we turn the key on, 
that's how much total amps is being drawn with everything on headlight HHO unit passive unit now we'll disconnect the dry cell and that's how many less amps we're using now so we're only we are we are using less than an amp just a little more you know I would say about one amp we're using about one amp and if we switch polarity the negative the meter goes backwards but will show us that we're still charging once we crank it up as you see we are still charging we still have almost five amps of charging power we disconnect the mini me now that is a passive HHO system hooked up with a direct hookup HHO dry cell this is like 10 times the production that I had last year with just one direct hookup wet cell